welcome back to another VEX tutorial on how to use Autodesk Inventor Professional to CAD a robot. So first of all, after you've installed the Autodesk Inventor, you have to also get the VEX parts library. So here we actually have this uh, parts library um, called library 1.2 that is provided by uh, our kind VEX community. And in here we've got like all sorts of parts. You've got the standoffs, the C channels, the different steel aluminum parts that you can use. So basically what we want to do is we want to download the um, download the folder and after it's downloaded, make sure to put it somewhere that you can find later on. All right, so let's go into Inventor. This is probably what you would see. And the first thing you need to do is uh, make a assembly. So under here, new, or you can go up here, click on new. And here we can have a assembly or just a part. So it's pretty self-explanatory. The part here just stands for one singular part, but an assembly is where you can put um, different parts together and put it into one bigger thing. And here under the parts, we also have the sheet metals. Um, we don't really need to use these in VEX because um, we already got all the parts in our library and the thing that we use the most is actually the assembly. We need to put all the parts together and make sure that they work. And we also have the um, weldments here. So this is supposed to work with the sheet metal. It's basically like constructing metal stuff. You need to like weld them together and stuff. So what we want to do is just create a standard assembly. And then it brings you to this interface. But under assemble, um, we want to uh, just use place. And then in place, you you would want to like select the part that you would want to use. So let's say uh, I'm gonna just put down a 35 wide C channel, right? So here it's kind of gray, and you can right click and you can rotate how you want to put down the thing. Let's say we're going to build a like just standard drive. You can just put it down and then just put two more down and then rotate it. You can just kind of like uh, play around with this a little bit and then you can get the hang of um, how these parts rotate in three dimensional space. All right, so um, there's one thing that we always need to do is that we need to select a piece that would be our grounding piece so what, what, what i mean by that is that we want it to be grounded what grounded does is that um once it's grounded you you can't move it so it'll, it'll stay in place then let's say if i unground it right i can move it like wherever i want so this is really important because you don't want your robot or like all of your parts to be like moving around everywhere. Some of the other basics is the controls. So the controls, um, you would use the scroll wheel. So you press down on the scroll wheel and you can move your mouse. It will like um, move on your screen. And then if you scroll up, it will zoom out and you scroll down, it will zoom in. And then if you press shift, like you hold shift and you press down your middle mouse button or the scroll wheel button, you can pan around the um, assembly like this. So basically these are all the stuff, all, all the moves that you would need to do to like navigate around the three dimensional space. So for today, we're just going to make like a very basic uh, just drive. So what we want to do is we want to constrain the parts together. Because as you can see right now, all these parts are just free. They, they, they can go wherever they want, except for this uh, grounded part. All right, so we want to use a thing called constraint. 
it's here and then normally these are the different kinds of constraints so there is the um, the normal mate constraint so it works by you can just select this phase select this phase right and then it, it would stick to each other or if I select the flush that means the the face will face the same way then it'll be flush against each other but that is not what we want to do for now what we want to do is use the insert um, constraint so then we can select one of these circles and notice how the circles have like a direction to them you want to make sure that you select the right circles so then it will like constrain themselves together right so here they're facing opposite ways because one one of the arrows is uh, once the arrows is facing down and one of them is facing up and let's say if we do flush then it will be the same as the previous one that I showed you they will face the same way and then it will be flush uh, to each other but we want to do it like this because in real life you can't really um, have the metals overlapping each other right and then I want to do it do the same thing for this as well because if I don't do it that means I only have one of the holes constrained and this is basically the same thing as I only have one of the holes screwed in so that means it's actually free to rotate because it's not supported by two holes alright so we want to um, constrain or you can just press C on the keyboard and you can select the circles the upper circle and the lower circle and then constrain them together so now it can't move anymore because both of the joints are basically locked together so we can repeat this process for basically uh, all the stuff that we need to do alright so we can select the circles and constrain them together so now this one can't move either my tip is that you would want to um, drag your metal like close to where you actually want to put it and then afterwards you can just like do what I did we can just constrain the circles together because like they're really close to each other and then we can just select them easily uh, moving on we're going to have to put a wheel in here as well we can go into our library and we can go into motion and we can go into wheels omni wheels let's just do a 3.25 inch wheel so here we want to put one wheel here and one wheel back here so I might just rotate the wheel to how it's supposed to be oriented and put one here and then put one here but notice that it's actually um, placed in very weird spots I don't know why this happens but it's designed like that so we kind of have to deal with it so then we'll just drag it to the appropriate holes and then we'll just drag it like this so then it's uh, it looks nice so we can do this just like how we do it in real life so we're not going to put the axle in can because it's too too annoying so you want to go into spacers and then the black spacers is what we normally use now and then we can select the different length so this is the big boy spacer and then this is the second to largest this is our medium boy and this is our small boy All right so we have these uh, four spacer sizes and then uh, we also have the washers so the teflon washers um, our vex ones are 0 0.04 inches and the other dimensions are the uh, RoboSource uh, thick and thin washers but the VEX washers are 0 0.04 inches that's that and then we can just use this 0.25 so we can just do this like how we build our normal robots 
you have a medium space and put it with the wash in and you can put it against the wheel right so you want to go into insert the insert constraints under assembly and then either circle is fine as long as um, the middle axis the middle axis there is the same Alright, so you can select this, and we can select this, and now they are constrained together. And here is also a offset thing that you might wonder like what it is. So the offset thing is basically determining how far apart they are. So if I go 1, then this will be 1 inches, if I go 2, there will be 2 inches apart. So normally you want this to be zero, so then they'll be just right next to each other. All right, so I want to constrain this one side of this to the wheel. So I can also just select set a circle of the insert there. And I press apply. And then we can also select the other side of the spacer and then select the circle on the C channel. So now it goes on to it as well. Right? Alright, so we can also select these two. Uh, you can hold down shift to like so select multiple things. So then normally like you click on something and you click on another thing, it will just only select the things the latter thing that you clicked on. But if you hold down shift, you can just select multiple things. So I would want to select both of these and I would copy and then I'll paste. Alright, so I want to do the same thing here. I select the circle, one end of the spacers, put it with the insert, and then select my other end and put it onto the C channel. Alright, so as you can see, we, we now got two wheels on our robot, and now we can also um, add more spacers Let's do uh, 0.25 Then we're going to constrain it to the wheel as well And then we can place a sprocket And then normally we would do the 18 tooth sprockets Because it's got the holes and you can like screw, screw the sprocket together um, Like screw the sprocket to the wheel So then there will be less slop so we want to select this and select the spacer so now it connects together um, what we can do here to make the sprockets and the wheel turn together is we can actually constrain the mate constraint actually comes in different forms so let's say I select this axis I can constrain it to another axis so that it's on the same axis so then you see how this hole here the axis of this hole and the axis of the wheels hole is aligned and now I press apply they will spin together now alright so we can we want to select this and select this copy and paste and we want to go into constraints again constrain this to this All right and then we want to uh, do the same thing as well we use the mates, the normal mates, the first one. And then we select the axis and we select the other whole axis. And then make them make sure that they're aligned. And press apply. Now they can spin together. So now we want to put the motors in. We want to go into electronics. And normally I like to use the simple motor because it is a lot easier to constrain it to other um things. Let me put in, in the normal motor for comparison. Right, let me rotate it uh, the right way around. Uh, Z axis. Yep. Like that. You see how when I want to constrain, I go to insert, right? There's like a whole bunch of different circles here. And it's really hard to select the right one because each of the circles, they, they have a different height, right? 
can say you see some circles are from a gold insert some are inside the gold insert and some are like the curves and the outer curves and there's like a lot of layers to it so you would like select the wrong wrong circle and then um the cad will just be angry at you and so what our community has done like our nice vex community is that they've made a identical a motor but made it a lot more simple right so we just have one singular circle here that we need to select and that makes our lives very easy and now we can insert we can select the nice big yellow circle and then we put it onto the C channel like this right and now it's it's on a different rotation so then I would want to select the circle and then put it into the right hole there you go so now our, our motor is aligned uh, with an axle and into the wheel right and then we can copy we can paste and then you can select use the insert constraint select the circle and then put it in the right place oh so for situations like this where like it it's like covered by the C channel you can just turn the motor and now the yellow face is visible to us so then we can select the circle select the C channel circle we click apply and now it can't move anywhere this can't move anywhere and the wheels in the sprocket they can spin together so that's about it for um, our first tutorial so when you finish the robot you would want to save it and what I normally do is I put it in the library folder so then it's like nice to find and you won't like accidentally delete it or like move it into another folder for the name you can just name it like test one or however you want to name it press uh save and then press okay and then now it's saved and you can just close it without worrying about it thank you very much for watching and see you guys next time